guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to talk about finance we are at the beginning of the year and we all have like different targets and things we want by the end of the year i personally have a whole list of things that i want to have achieved at least by end of 2023 so in today's um topic we're going to talk about the finance bit uh, all the aspect of money there's um, a mystery that is shrouded around money. The people we even see are talking about money. Um, so we are here to demystify all that. To also tell the women that please don't look at only men when it comes to money. You need to also work, plan, strategize and do all those things. So I'm here with none other than Mr. Chahang Kano Timothy, who is the CEO of The Five, where we actually are right now. And uh, he also owns uh, Shetin Shoppers, he's a senior farmer. If you've not watched the video, we actually had a video like, must have been like my second video, and it, um, where he took us to his farm and showed us how to, you know, take care of goods, that whole thing. So in today's video, he's going to talk about the finances and things like that. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Timothy Chantano and I'm uh, the chairman of Fives Group. Uh, where we have the five operations along the uh, Shetting supermarket and uh, the Shetting farm as well. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to have you today. <laughs> Why is it important for someone to be financially aware and have you know, those basic, basic financial tips and all that? I think it is uh, important to learn how to save your money plan for it mm -hmm. and how to invest it. If you make a wrong investment, definitely you're going to lose a lot of money. Yeah. If you make the right investment, you're going to make money. Mm -hmm. So, and um, at times, only one source of it. At times, most, most of the people are employed, others are entrepreneurs. So you find uh, if you're relying on one stream of, of income, then it becomes risky because if you get laid off, like what happened during COVID, most people are laid off. Yeah. They, they didn't have any plan B, so it was a, a bit of a challenge. So I think we're now in a world where we need to know your finances and plan and uh, have a savings scheme, like an investment scheme. So that even if you lose your job today, yeah. tomorrow you have uh, a, way, a way out. Mm -hmm. uh, how you're going to live more for, especially if you're married, if you have a family, if you have responsibilities. Life must continue yeah, true. with all with that job. Mm -hmm. What are those? basic tips that you think everyone should know about finances? Uh, first of all, you need to first know how much you're making. Yeah. You cannot be uh, earning 100,000 and your budget for the month is, uh, let's say, uh, 300,000. That means it doesn't make sense. And number two, you must uh, know how to budget for your finances. In budgeting, I mean, look at uh, the what you call uh, the regular expenses and the irregular expenses. The regular expenses are things like uh, rent, food, mm. allowance, and, and, and all that. So things that you that you can't live without. Yeah. And then your regular expenses are things like happening on a Friday. Do you really need it or if you don't? My, my rule is if I feel I can do without something. Okay. If it's an expense, I'd rather do without it. Okay. Because. Uh, for example, your people make mistakes. I, I've, I've seen friends who get in school, when they make some bit of money, they buy a car. It gives you the social status. Yeah. But is it actually increasing the network? Is it increasing your value? It's mm -hmm. a huge expense on yourself. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you leave the car. You have friends who look at you like yeah mm -hmm. but really in actual sense um you're having a huge expense on your because the very moment you move that you have out of the bank starts depreciating if you paid for it uh, 30 million or 40 million the next buyer is going to give you the yeah 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 true so i i, I would advise that um don't look at how society perceives you which is hard. <laughs> you need, you need, because at the end of the day, when you're failing, so sorry, so you're still at Again, the true, 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 true. Okay. So, you must also have uh, a savings plan. 
you know, I have my budget is this, and uh, this is what I, this is what I can afford to share. Mm-hmm. If if I live the hard way, this is how much I can afford to get. Then we save it. And so after saving, we also have a plan of what we want to do and so on. Because uh, time is what we call time value of money. Money today is not the same as money tomorrow. Yeah. If I have a ten thousand today, it doesn't have the same worth uh, maybe a year or two years later. So if you're saving money, don't just save and keep the money. Have a have an investment plan. Uh, how you want to invest the money, and that is where you need to focus most importantly. Because at the end of the day, at times you you have done the savings, the budgeting, and everything, and then your investment plan is plan is really the worst. Yeah, true. Uh, and uh, most people make a lot of mistakes. They 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 invest their money in fixed assets, and yet a fixed asset a fixed asset normally appreciates in value but over time. Mm-hmm. But literally, what we need at this stage is uh, cash flow. You invest in something that's going to generate cash flow. Cash flow is healthy to you. There are what you call short-term plans and long-term plans. Mm-hmm. So you must have both. Uh, for example, I want to may say I want to have uh, uh, maybe an investment of 20 million shillings in the next three uh, years. Mm-hmm. But then your cash flow right now and your savings, even if you, you save it for the next three years, you may not get the, the 20 million shillings. But there are different investments that you can make. If you sold them at the end of three years, you'll have the 20 million shillings and put them together, then do that huge investment return. Mm-hmm. So it, it's good to, to plan in that you must have the short term plans and the long term plans. Mm-hmm. And uh, have achievable plans. Don't set things that are beyond you and realistic. So let's have short-term goals, achieve them, and that, that could lead us to, to achieve them our own long-term goals. Um, that's a very good tip. Um, the next question is, how do I achieve financial freedom? Uh, financial freedom is a journey. It's not something you achieve in one goal. Okay. And uh, I believe as, as we are all growing up and moving this journey of life, we have, um, we have dreams and ambitions. Yeah. And as you have dreams and ambitions, uh, things you want to have in life, there's a certain kind of life you live, to provide for your family. And um, to achieve financial freedom, there are different things. There is something, especially when it comes to people who are, who, who are employed, there's something called um, uh, the rattress. Uh, and the rattress is. Uh, it, it's called. It, it's the, the dictionary defines it as a, a self-defeating pursuit, uh, and and most people are caught up in that. You you start as uh, as a graduate, you end up with a million shillings. You pay. You're staying in a rental, uh, maybe a single or con- a, a studio apartment or a city room and a bedroom for about three hundred, four hundred. Now, uh, two years later, three years later, you know, go for a master's and then you come back, they move you up the ladder mm. to be the level management. Now, your salary is increased from one million to maybe two million shillings, three million shillings. Now, you move to a bigger house. Mm-hmm. Now, you, you realize that as your, as, your, as your income is increasing, also your expenses are increasing. Increasing, yeah. So, literally, if you're not saving a lot or you're not having any huge any money you're putting aside because mm-hmm. as you move up the ladder you're also improving the life so maybe mm-hmm. at the end of the day you buy a small vehicle and you go for a phd uh, they give you uh, top level management now you want to drive uh, the four wheel drive mm-hmm. uh, bigger bigger vehicle and and you find yourself caught up in that self-defeating hustle mm-hmm. you know? and by the time you leave by the time you retire or you leave your job you found if you find that Yes, you've been living a very good lifestyle, but you do not have much waste. Because you've not saved, you've not planned, you've not invested properly. Or there are others who make the wrong investments. Um, you acquire a lot of land. Mm, mm. You asset rich, but cash flow. What is very important now is um, cash flow. Is cash flow. Mm. Because at the end of the day, what sustains is cash flow. How much are you? How much money is coming to property? Mm-hmm. How much money are you making each day? And if 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 your cash your cash flow poor, then you're as good as someone who's poor. Oh, even with the land. Because at the end of the day, you're going to sell the land. Now, have the cash in your pockets. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. But then you're spending all of your cash flow. You don't have any other daily cash flow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I normally advise people uh, how to have investments that generate cash flow. Now, there are other other kinds of investments. People are running out of realistic things. For example, farming. There's a lot of money in farming. Yeah. If you look at the population, 20% of the population is feeding, 80% feeding. Because it's the 20% of the village that are living in the family. Yeah, that That's why the price for food and agriculture products is, uh, is increasing every day. If, if, if you take a few steps back, maybe to, to like 2019, 2019, 2018, mm. the bunch of Matoke is 15,000. Right now in Kampala, as of, as of today, the bunch of Matoke is 40, 50,000. Because there's a lot of demand mm. and the supply is still low. Still low. And, uh, you must invest in things that people use every day. That's what it's consuming. For example, people who run uh, supermarkets you must buy soap, you must buy sugar, you must buy. The margins are small, but if you have the numbers, mm. Mm. If, if, if you have the sales volumes, you'll make the money. Okay. And I, I also in, uh, advise people who are. Um, who are in employment to invest in businesses or, or make investments that not that not need a lot of supervision because you're you're running an, an eight to five job yeah. and you don't have time to supervise the business. Mm -hmm. If you set up a supermarket food system, if you're doing farming, it means you can even go twice in a month, which is easy, other than um, you uh, maybe running a, a mobile money business and. Uh, Put your relative who runs the money, <laughs> or you come in the evening and someone tells you that uh, you know, I made a loss of two million shillings, yet they are moving pocket with the money, and you become discovered by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, I, I encourage people to have uh, multiple streams of income. Yeah, for me, this, the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, once, once you've acquired enough the cash flows, then you can start investing in the fixed assets. Mm, so we've been doing it the reverse. We were starting with the fixed and then trying to get to, 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 to the cash flows. Yeah. I believe in um, following someone. Mm. You should have someone look up to. Like a mentor. Yeah, like a mentor. So, yeah. Have someone look up to. Mm. And um, also, when you have someone you admire and look up to, you want to be like them. Yeah, true. Sure. And, and, and then this forces you to, to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. But can I mean, to be like that mm -hmm. like person. And you must also have a positive mindset. You do not give up. I know business is one of the harder things. <laughs> they also have, they also, I've also got a point where they feel like I've made the wrong investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, you stick to it because mm -hmm. it has to work. And, and, and another thing I always tell people, I learned that from a friend. If, if 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 you're running a business, business is not about passion. It's about making the decisions. You cannot stick in something because it's about your passion. Mm -hmm. You must do something that's going to make your money. You must plan and think for it. And if you feel the business is not really working, okay, then stop the business. You can either find ways on how to stop it. Find ways on how to stop it that has failed to work. Leave the business and move on to the next. Because the, the very moment you stick to it and you keep investing in money, it's like holding a dead horse. It's like the horse is dead. It's dead. There's, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I wanted us to talk about um, we are, I'm a, for example, a young lady, and uh, society expects me to focus mainly on maybe getting married, getting the children. <laughs> And you, I mean, this is what really happens. So, what is your advice to the young ladies out there? Because you will like want to buy a property, and someone is like, "But you're a woman." What What is the advice that you have for such people? I, I think uh, we're now the world is moving to the and we are moving out of the African tradition. Owning a property doesn't stop you from being a woman. Owning a property doesn't stop you from being a woman. Running a business, because uh, I, I think uh, since. Uh, this government has been encouraging and promoting the girl child. Sure. And uh, it has given the girl child an equal platform to the girl child. Actually, now we started, we started feeling that like the boy <laughs> child is being left behind. <laughs> we are all having an equal platform, and I believe um, we all have the same kind of protection because God blessed us 
the same way we are both human, we are both we have both the same potential. Mm. I've seen ladies who are achievers, mm. I've seen ladies who are very hard working and they have put themselves out there and mm. they have achieved. So I believe um, we all have the same platform and if you're a lady and you shouldn't be you shouldn't hold yourself back but as how people see me when I buy the property mm. or something if I had if I'm running the business. Mm. Our question is, do you have a reward system? Yes. Okay. Uh, I believe uh, you only reward yourself once you achieve it. Why do you think it's important to have a reward system? Because I believe it's you that has 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 worked so hard to achieve that, and you should also get time and reward yourself. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, life isn't about um, amassing the world. You need also to because you, you might be up and about every day and here and there are trying to amass this and that and by the time you you're not even satisfied actually because you also need to live that you need to, to be out there relate with people it cannot be uh, an office and investments and you're not living you also need to live you need to, live. You need to see what is happening out in the world you also need to travel because once you travel you get exposed mm -hmm. If you can't travel, if you, those who can't travel out to the country, mm. go out there and see new and brilliant ideas. Because there are very many new ideas out there. Mm. What else do you think drives you to the point of which you are? Move out and relate to people. And uh, at times when you see some people going through a certain phase in life, you want to protect yourself from going through a certain phase. Yeah. That's so that's... that's that preempts you to work harder and think at the time. Like I said at the beginning, everyone has, uh, has a vision of how he wants to you know, live his life, how he wants to be at the end of the day. And um, I want to retire early, I want to have financial freedom, I want to achieve that financial freedom. Mm. Retire early, do other things. Mm -hmm. And I also want to leave a legacy for my children to carry on. And and getting back to tradition, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been I do construction business as well. So I have seen how the Indian community um, does things, especially for people who run big businesses, find a business that was was had by maybe a great grandfather in 1920 let's say as a small factory or a small uh, plant establishment, mm -hmm. establishment has moved and grown into a factory because there is instilling the business into the family mm -hmm. and you find that if let's say my my my, my father my, my grandfather was a rancher my father is still a rancher I mean our common at some value maybe start a beef factory mm -hmm. and you, you see we're moving from from ranching to production. And maybe my son will come and do will come and do make an export and something like that. And, 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 and I find that the business is, is living on. Mm -hmm. What happens here is uh, a certain person X comes and starts a business, it flourishes, maybe he puts up a very huge hardware or puts up a very huge hotel and from the person. The business comes to it fails within maybe five or six years. We as parents have to instill certain things into our children. Yeah, that's true. At times we want to pump up our children to go and go to work and want to love and turn the business. Involved within the business. They will learn how to do the business. You don't have to start them in the office, start them in the the no ground, level, yeah, they yeah, so also know, appreciate, uh, they they appreciate how even the workers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if uh, you decide to retire at another stage when your kids are going to school, you can decide to make the business work and mm -hmm. when you come just to collect your, your, your pocket at the mm -hmm. end of every month mm -hmm. and you know that you left a the best. And it's also the plan for the whole time. You don't need to wait until one time to start doing this because you're going to make your move the wrong place. 
I'm going to do that. Which one is the best of the rest? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> so I believe you start early, you can just add it. So I always talk about what you should feel when you're working somewhere and you feel you have achieved when you're still peak. the peak of it. Mm -hmm. I think you're you outgrowing the organization. Maybe you need to move on to the next. Seasons have changed yes, and yeah. Yes. And, and I always tell my other professional friends that as, as we are growing, as we are working, there are other people that are coming. And these guys are more aggressive because they are, they are graduates every year from, yeah. from each and every university. Level. And these people are even more sharp than we are, than even we were. Because mm, yeah. the times are different, yeah. The times are different. <laughs> As 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 you move up the ladder, like, uh, have a plan, have other streams of work, so that if this one is turned out, the others will come to it. Okay. Thank you, Timothy, for that insight for anyone that is watching and your finances are in a shambles or they are you, you can't even tell. Like I said in the beginning, the girl, I've met people who can barely talk about money. Like it's like taboo for them. But one thing I've noticed is that you have to like open your eyes. If you've been making mistakes, look at them and you'll be able to move forward better. But if you keep hiding, it doesn't help you. So I'm grateful that you've given us those tips. Of course, there are even things that I've just learned from you now. Okay, so keep watching. Till next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>